Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 129 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara, which everybody knows that already. How you doing, partner? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How about yourself? It's a Friday and it's super busy. Looking forward to a couple days off, but I'm doing fantastic. After all this time, you're still busy? Yeah, we're, um, yeah, we're, we're busy. Let's put it that way. Good. Yeah. We are right. also doing well. Seems like the whole industry is doing well if you look on social media. But unfortunately, we have some bad news, but some good news. So another meeting, unfortunately, another one bites the dust. Sadly, but I think a a smart decision, Vision 21 meeting is being moved to sometime in April. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. This amazing meeting held every year in January in Las Vegas, Barb and I both agree, is the must-go-to meeting of the year. But in 2021, maybe Vegas is not the place to be in January. And maybe it's not the place to be in April either. (laughs) So that's why they are looking to possibly move it to another city for the April date. Stay tuned and we'll keep you posted on all the details as they are being released. So Barb, something I didn't tell you. Uh Uh-oh. Something you didn't tell me. They were talking about Visions 21 and they asked if we would do a live and on stage version of our podcast. Sweet. Yeah, I said yes without asking you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we'll see how that goes, you know. Hopefully we can still do it in April. That hasn't been discussed, but I don't see why not. It's going to be interesting. Us on stage live with no editing and no bleeps. Bleeps. I think I can handle that. Can you? I'll be on my best behavior. Well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Even if it's not Vegas, we'll still act like it's Vegas. Maybe you can just bring a bleep and we'll be like three Ooh. seconds behind or three seconds in front or whatever yeah. they do. You tap my foot every time you're about to cuss <laughs> and then I'll be ready with the button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a deal. <laughs> it'll be interesting. We do edit what we do and it'll be interesting to see what it's like live. I'll try not to talk over you. Uh, Yeah, please don't. Or, uh, or I probably will. Yeah, and I pro- yeah. I'll try. Yeah, I'll I'll try not to scream at you (laughs) off mic. So on Labor Day, I was out on a run, and I passed somebody that was wearing a mask. Hmm. Yes, I know, nothing new. It's been going on for months. But for some reason, I started thinking about how even during these days, when a majority of people are covering their smiles, as you just stated, all labs are busy, and we're doing a lot of smile makeovers. Hmm. So I thought it was appropriate to make the official... Voices from the Bench face masks with the phrase, creating smiles even under a mask. Who told you that? That is beautiful. Did you come up with that all by yourself? I did. Very impressive. This is what happens when I run. I have time to think. (laughs) No, I know that. Yeah. I wear a mask all day at the lab. I know you wear a mask all day at the lab. We're all wearing masks. So I thought it was time to get the official face mask out there all right and like all of our other t-shirts all profits go towards the foundation of dental laboratory technology well i'm gonna order mine as soon as we're done here because i got the link and i'm gonna get on there and order at least 10 10 nice my co-workers heck yeah i'm in we're selling them until september 27th so get yours today sweet link can be found on this episode show notes and on our facebook page and over at VoicesFromTheBench.com. Whew, as if you haven't already talked enough. Take this part. Okay. (laughs) This week has us talking to Leonard Hoffman from Oradent. Since 1974, Oradent has been providing our industry with various materials and services. They've also had to adapt to the changes over the years, like the use of alloys moving to zirconia and the introduction to the digital workflow. Leonard comes on to talk about how he took over for his parents and told us about coming into the family business, continuing to offer the personal customer service that has always been and will continue to be the priority for the company. So join us for a conversation with Leonard Hoffman from Oradent. 
Dental Services Group is proud to support the National Board of Certification in Dental Technology and proudly promote certification for dental technicians throughout their national network of laboratories. The CDT designation sets certified dental technicians apart from others in the field demonstrating a mastery of knowledge and applied skills in the art of dentistry. Certification also raises the standards of dental health through education in all aspects of dental technology. At Dental Services Group, they believe dentistry plays a significant role in the healthcare ecosystem and is committed to providing solutions to benefit the overall health and well being of the patient. Visit NBCCERT to learn more about becoming a CDT and dentalservices.net to learn more about how DSG supports the dental community. And they support our podcast. So thank you, DSG. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. All right. Today on the podcast, we are pleased to be joined by Leonard Hoffman from Oradent. Now, a little bit of a backstory. Back in 2019, Barb and I's first Lab Day Chicago, and we had a booth right down the escalator. <laughs> and to our right, our very first neighbor at any convention, Oradent. And here we are, full circle, well <laughs> over almost two years later, we finally got him on the podcast. How are you, sir? I am great. Glad to be here. And thank you very much for uh, inviting me on Voices from the Bench. Really happy to be here and enjoyed uh, watching Voices from the Bench grow as you've grown just uh, since I've seen you in Chicago in 2019. Thank you. Yeah, we were so green back then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've watched that show grow so much, and uh, it's just nice to see a podcast in general associated with the industry and, and what both of you have done since you started it. Thank you. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. So I noticed something recently on Facebook. You guys just hit like a milestone. What did I notice and that which prompted me to reach out? Sure. Well, a couple of things. If I can give you a, a quick background on us, and that, that, would lead, that would lead to the answer to the milestone. I joined Orodent back in 1987 with the idea of bringing inside sales to the company and expanding the company throughout the country. I, I've been here since eight, 1987 and 1990 full time. What you're referring to is our milestone is our 45 year anniversary. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. The company was uh, founded by my mother and father. Uh, my dad's a, a metallurgical engineer, a metallurgist who went to NYU University. He was very active as an aerospace engineer. Uh, he was involved with the lunar landing module what? back in 1969, uh, landed on the moon. If you guys remember when Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. Yep. I've heard about it. No. Yep. <laughs> Separated from the Apollo and landed with the lunar landing module. My dad worked at a company uh, involved as an aerospace contractor that was in charge of a team of people that worked on the nozzles of that lunar landing module that was able to help the astronauts land safely and take off and get back to the Apollo in space, wow. which was kind of neat. So he has a pretty interesting background in, in metallurgy and uh, years later got involved in the dental industry by being hired by a large manufacturer of dental alloys based out of Chicago. And uh, he worked for that company for years, a couple of years, uh, working as their production manager and being promoted mm -hmm. general manager and then that company was bought by a much larger company, and he started Oradent in 1974 with my mom. And my mother was a school teacher at the time who gave up her teaching at night to become an uh, outside sales representative for Oradent. And they pretty much started the company uh, grassroots, really with nothing, literally zero. Because of my mom's sales ability and her knack for communicating, she was very successful. Because of her and my dad... They set the whole foundation for me basically 10 to 15 years later. And I'm very thankful for that. I don't forget where I came from and what we started with, you know, which they pretty much started out of their house and then moving into a small building and then moving into a much larger building. And Oradent originally obviously started off as an alloy manufacturer producing alloys. And we've grown tremendously across the board, getting into digital like most other companies in the industry. Sure. As you see, we're involved with our zirconia, selling, you know, Delta Zirconia and producing Oradent ZR, a line made in the United States. And 
we have all kinds of things we're doing to fill the void that some of the big manufacturers can't always do with respect to service. And one of the things that my parents did, which I thought was amazing, was they were able to give superior service to our dental laboratory customers in California. If you placed an order, let's say uh, Elvis or Barb, you placed an order from your dental lab in the morning and you needed uh, whatever you needed, two, three ounces of alloy, whatever it may have been. Mm -hmm. It was delivered, not, not shipped. It was delivered the same day that you ordered it. And they built the whole foundation on that, and they did it throughout the whole state of California. It was pretty successful because any other company that tried to compete against that, it made it uh, challenging because we didn't ship stuff at that time. It was all delivered. Really? How many drivers did they have doing that? And was it like in a radius of mileage, or how did that work? Well, interesting question. This is the part that uh, my dad and I bumped heads on sometimes uh, when I joined the company. Each sales representative in the company would – personally deliver their own orders wow. to their own customers. So they had like a trunk full of hundreds and thousand dollars worth of alloy? I was going to say that too. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say exactly like that, but I would have to say, yes, each sales representative did carry inventory hmm. and they had salespeople all, all throughout the state of California doing that. Wow. It was pretty successful for a long time. Interesting. Yeah. And you know, when I got involved in 1987, I was part-time. I saw what was going on and my parents reminded me that this was all about personal service. And, mm -hmm. you know, since you're both very involved, you know, in your laboratories, you understand that personal relationships are the key to a lot of this and working with your vendors. And it was important that we built a really good team of people that we could count on to offer that type of service. And I can tell you today, it is the team of people that work for me that made me, you know, myself, who I am and, and what Oradun has today to offer. I count on these people and, for me, they're, they're doing a phenomenal job. They're doing the best they can do with the tools they have to work with. And we have pretty much implemented the same type of service that we've offered, you know, back in the 70s that we offer today, which is just bar none service. You can call Oradent till 445 at night, which would be about, I believe, 745 East Coast time out where yeah. you are, in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. You can say, hey, we need, uh, you, know, you know, whatever you need, whatever it could be. Uh, we need three discs of, uh, you know, A1, translucent, whatever it is for your milling. Your other supplier wouldn't be able to ship it that late in the day because it might be too late. We would be able to still get that out priority overnight. And because of the three-hour time difference, we could have that in your hands the next morning before 1030 in the morning. Amazing. So, we, you know, we try to do things like that to to still offer that service absolutely that's always a huge benefit being on the east coast because in indiana we're on east coast too and anytime you deal with the west we get that little bit of a cushion every time we do stuff yeah sure. it's very nice yeah i've got a question for you so growing up did you always know that you were going to go into the business with your parents or was that something that you was forced upon you or how does it was forced upon me so i say that with love <laughs> great question great question so while I was in college, you know, I, to answer that question, I have to give you a little bit of information. I was working for uh, Sears while I was in college, which no longer is the retailer it is today. But Sears was all over the country. I was selling over the telephone for Sears, you know, their services and products, and came up with the idea that if I could do this while I'm working at Sears, my parents could probably sell their dental alloys and their zirconia and all these other products we have over the phone hmm. and do that. My father was open to the idea, but uh, he didn't want to pay me. And I said, you know, why don't we just try this and see how it works out? And I said, you know, I, I'm not really a nonprofit kind of guy. I, I, kind of, <laughs> I ended up getting out of college with a bachelor's in marketing, business administration. And I went to go work for a, a large uh, corporation out of Connecticut for seven years. You might be familiar with Stanley Tools. They were a large manufacturer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was the Stanley rep in Southern California. <laughs> For, for seven years, I had a company car. I was thinking I was on top of the world. I liked outside sales. It was phenomenal. And during that time, I was able to talk my dad into taking the risk of setting up the inside sales program for Oradent. So to answer your question, Barb, mm -hmm. I didn't really want to work for them, at, at least early on in my career of, of sales or even out of college, because I really wanted to be self-made. I didn't want to work for my mom and dad. Yeah, I actually shied away from it mm -hmm. and thought, let me do something else and try to prove myself that I, I can do something working for somebody else. Well, I was able to accomplish that objective. I did that 
Uh, after seven years, I left that big corporation and I was able to have the opportunity of joining Oradent. So I, I had a different attitude, Barbara, that, you know, working for a big company was nice, but I wanted to be a little bit more, have more gratification by participating with something that my family created and that I can contribute something to and watch that growth. So in the early days, I didn't really want to do it. And as I would say, after five or seven years of working for somebody else, my attitude changed and I went ahead and used my experience and resources and brought it to Orida. Wow. Yeah, I love that. You know, Elvis and I have talked to over 100 people, mostly technicians, manufacturers, and it's a family oriented industry. And um, you pretty much fell on the same wagon that I did because I didn't ever want, wanted to work for my father. And like I said, I was a little bit forced into it, but it definitely sounds like you followed the same track. So good for you. Awesome. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, and again, just to reiterate, I, I really thank my mom and dad for what they created and did. I mean, my mom was a workhorse in her time. And I'm, I'm not just saying this because she's my mother. <laughs> I tell you guys, I know for a fact that she was probably the number one salesperson at, at one point in the days when, uh, you know, it was very difficult for a woman to be accepted as an outside salesperson. Oh, yeah. And have the challenge of all these other men that are out there selling the same type of products and, and same type of dental materials to dental laboratories. And it was rare, Barbara, that a woman would walk into a dental lab as an outside sales rep in the 70s. It was almost non-existent, actually. You know, I love that. Good for her. Yeah. Bad yeah so I love that. He, he, he kicked butt for a long time and eventually, you know, semi-retired and my parents are uh, still uh, still involved in it, believe it or not, and still in the business. And uh, oh, nice! Uh, my dad, we got him a laptop, so obviously he can't come to the office during COVID because of you know his age and his health. And he's still healthy, but uh, still involved and knows what's going on. You know, he's pretty much in touch. Sometimes I I would like it if maybe he'd be a little less in touch. But... <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I don't can understand that. It's just sometimes they have a hard time letting go, guys. Of oh, their... I bet. they do. Oh, yeah. Barbara, can you relate to micromanaging sometimes? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I work for my father, so I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And, and so I was able to contribute here by basically adding on to our sales department, adding into our manufacturing, customer service, shipping. And then we expanded in our real estate. We were uh, in a small place in Buena Park a long time back and then moved to Fullerton, California in 1984. And then we ended up purchasing the building next to us in Fullerton. So it made it easy where we didn't have to move the company mm -hmm. and was able to expand out where we are now. So we've been in this facility shipping everything out of right here out of Fullerton. You know, all of our Oradent products, everything from Oradent ZR, Delta Zirconia, all the scanners that we sell, we ship everything out of here. And it's been very successful for us. We're located uh, just basically 10 minutes away from Disneyland, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Oh, of, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, yeah, really close. And I'm a, you know, I'm a native, born and raised out here, so I, I, I like California. Yeah. So obviously when you came on board and started the, what do you call it, the internal sales department, I guess, is that when you stopped doing the same-day delivery once you started taking phone orders from all over the country? Interesting question. So we still kept some drivers, you know, people inside the uh -huh. company that would do that. And so... We had a couple of salespeople that still had customers that had the demands of getting orders delivered the same day. One of those people would be my mom because a lot of those customers were local to where Oradent is. Yeah. So it, it made it so we were able to give that pretty much same level of service. Uh, we still do deliveries. We, it's still done today. Wow. Um, not on the same, not on the same scale, totally different scale. Yeah. But yeah, we still offer that service. And you know, one of the things that's really catapulted us recently has been our presence, Barbara, on social media. You had uh, mentioned that earlier in conversation. And you know, I can tell you that our, our team of people uh, has grown. We have a digital marketing coordinator who is really phenomenal. This guy is one of the best hires I've picked yet. Younger college graduate has really put a lot of strength into us being out there on Facebook. And we're planning right now, as I talk to you, some webinars that are uh, being planned to promote software. You know, we're a reseller of ExoCAD. Oh, nice. And I see that many other companies, although they may sell these products, are not offering perhaps some of the webinars that are needed, I think, for a lot of dental laboratory owners that uh, aren't able to go to trade shows at this time. And 
it would be nice. I think. Bummer. Yeah, yeah. You know, nice to offer that service though the uh, the webinar. So we're we we got a couple of things in the works, and we're we're going to see if we can move forward with that. And you'll probably be seeing that uh, through either Instagram or uh, Facebook going forward. Wow. Yeah, it's hard to find those type of people that can really grasp that social media. I mean, with so much out there right now, it's good to find good people that can do it. Yeah, it took, a, it took us a while because I do a lot of the hiring here. I, I wear all hats at Oregon. I'm, I'm kind of like a jack of all trades a little bit here on some things. Nice. Yeah. You know, I've done a lot of hiring. I've unfortunately had to do some, some terminating, but more hiring. And uh, I will tell you that this gentleman so far, out of many of the applicants I've talked to for uh, where he's at in his time, is one of the best I've come across. And uh, I hope to keep him for quite a while. He uh, is teaching me a few things that I, I obviously didn't know I'm behind because of my age. <laughs> you know, I'm a little, little embarrassed there that I, I was never a guy that was a social media guy personally because yeah. I'm a private person. But uh, I've learned that there are things I need to do and make changes on to move forward with today's world of digital and everything else going on in our industry. And the beauty of it is that you can find really good people that love doing it right. and bring them on board and just say, go for it. Because, you know, that, that's, that's a, a lot of us that are older, if you will, you know, we're just not into that stuff. And I think right. it's great to find right. the right person and just have them just take the reins over and make it what it is. So you're empowering him to do it. So good for you guys. Absolutely. I'm sure he'll be listening to this at some point. And probably giving me his best critique. Yep. <laughs> I hope I make him happy somewhere in this. <laughs> yeah. So, Leonard, I mean, obviously, all alloy in the industry, it's not the, the big thing in, in our industry anymore like it used to be when Oradent started. So, at some point, you had to look at yourself and say, I can't get by just by selling ingots. Absolutely. What was that like? Very good point. That's well, I would say that's been going on, Elvis, for probably the last eight to ten years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got you guys know you, you both run dental laboratories. You're involved. Yeah. Yep. You know, I would say dental labs in the United States have been engulfed in uh, digital production for more than a decade. I think you'd agree with that, right? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. So we've kind of made that slow transition in the beginning of you know offering zirconia, and I will tell you again that because of Delta Zirconia, which is a line that we've had a lot of success with over the last, I would say, several years, actually, uh, has grown for us. We are doing everything we can do as a manufacturer and a distributor of of products because we don't manufacture all of it, but we do manufacture some things here still. We're still a manufacturer. So we've made that transition by offering a wide variety of products and the multi-layer material that we offer in our Delta Zirconia line has been widely accepted, especially with the prices, because you both know with the doctors you deal with that you have to be competitive. And oh, yeah. we offer that price point for a lot of labs, They, go, you know, because they might say, well, I'm not really that interested. I'm pretty happy, but, you know, we'll look at it. And then we give them, you know, we do our price quotes like everything else. You get, you get solicited by vendors like us mm-hmm. and look at the price and you're like, you know, maybe I do need to look at that. Gosh, that puck is attractive at that price. So we adjusted by adding Delta Zirconia years ago. That helped us, Elvis. You know, more recently in the last couple of years, we added Oradin CR, which is made in the United States here in this country. And even more recently, we got into equipment uh, over the last probably five to seven years, promoting a scanner through Shining 3D. And the scanner we're having a lot of success with has been the DSEX Pro, which is a very economical based scanner for dental laboratories priced at a very good price point, probably lower than almost most of them on the market. We're currently promoting uh, our AccuFab D1 dental 3D printer that Shiny 3D also makes. You know, we're talking like 6,500 bucks for to get your foot in the door for these products, which really, you know, I'm not trying to sound like a commercial, even though I am. I get it. Yeah. It's attractive for labs that are like, well, I don't know if I want to get into digital or not. And this is their foot in the door. Yeah. It all starts with a scanner. So that, you know, you need that scanner. You got to have that scanner. So we've really promoted that heavily. And the thing that we're kind of most excited about even more is the uh, intraoral scanner we've taken on. We have an iOS that is newer for us. And the price point on that is is also, you know, we're competing against iTero and many other companies going into dentists now. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Okay. Yeah. So we're just going to start. Yeah. yeah. So the answer Elvis's this question, Oradent had to transition like everybody else to be able to survive and navigate itself in this economy. So we decided, hey, we're going to promote an iOS to dentists. And the advantage of that iOS is going to be a price point 
It's going to be service. Uh, we're going to technically back it up with technical support. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give these doctors a price that it's going to be hard for them to say no to, even if they're looking at retiring in five years, because the cost effectiveness of an iOS is worth it. Labs like yours, I'm assuming, would much rather receive digital files than get models you know, sent to you. Oh, yeah. For right. sure. Right. <laughs> As I talk to you and have this conversation, we are slowly working with several people in, throughout the United States to help us expand that and get that more into the operatory side. And eventually, don't be surprised if you are approached by somebody or you see this more and more on social media, because we're talking about literally for under $14,000, you can have an intraoral scanner and Oregon gives you a free laptop computer to go with it. Wow. Which I think is a phenomenal deal, you know, for yeah. the first timer, you know, for the first time doctor yeah. that wants to take, jump in, take that risk. And one of the things we do for you as laboratory owners that we've added on, which has been a real value added services, giving you something for buying from Oridet. You know how when you fly on an airplane or you, you know, you use your credit card, you get points, you get mileage, you get points, yeah. right? And so you're going to be more inclined to maybe use that credit card because you get the points or you're, you're going to buy from a certain grocery store because there's some benefit to you. Yep. We've added over the years, we've added something called rewards points program and we are right now in the middle of promoting the latest one called Origin Rewards, spell R-E-W-A-R-D-Z. And each time you buy from us, you're given points, depending on whether it's Origin ZR or it's Delta Zirconia or it's a scanner or it's any dental alloy or uh, we're also a distributor of PMMA. We, we're, we're very happy to sell PMMA through Quest. We give you points for that. The points are kept track of by Oradent, and you use those points to redeem them for Amazon gift cards. Oh, I like Amazon. Yeah. So we, we, <laughs> yeah. So you know, all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute, I've got uh, three. Uh, what do I have here? Uh, three hundred points, four hundred points, and you're good for maybe a fifty dollar, seventy five dollar, or hundred dollar Amazon gift card. Real simple. You call us. Love it. Redeem your points. We narrow it out, and you're like, ah, I like. I kind of like buying from Oradent. I like that little. Uh, that little benefit. <laughs> So we kind of rope them in that way too. There's well, you know, we all like that. Yeah. Everybody buys on Amazon. I was checking my order that was delivered earlier today and it's so much fun and it's so easy and it's so convenient. So I think that's a great perk. Yeah. You know, not only does it get a, maybe our foot in the door, but it, it keeps somebody like you loyal to us because let's be honest, you're going to get calls and solicited and hit by everybody in the industry on trying whatever they may have to offer you. And we try to make it so you want to stay on our side of the, the team you know, keep in mind, because Oradent is family owned and operated, we really, truly do treat a lot of our customers like they're part of us, like they're part of our family. And our reputation pretty much speaks for itself among our customers that have been with us for multiple decades, you know. Yeah, that's great. I'm interested in this scanner that you have, and you mentioned it was Shining 3D. Are they new into our field? or Shining 3D has been, uh, I would say, in the industry for Oh, probably more than, I would say, seven years, eight years. Okay. Oradent is one of the most active distributors of the Shining 3D products in North America. Okay. They do have other distributors, but what really put them on the map, Elvis, was the Shining 3D DSEX scanner. And it's a small scanner. You can look it up. If you go to the Oradent website at oradent.com, you can see it easily. Look at it on our website, and I'm already there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can take a look at that. And the newest is that it's called the DSEX Pro. It's a pretty good camera. It's got camera on it that's decent. I'm looking at it myself here. I just pulled up a flyer. Yeah, uh, and you can kind of see. You know, the camera's got a, it's a 1.3 uh, megapixel camera. Not a bad camera for its price. Again, a great scanner for either looking to maybe add on to your system because if you need more scanners. The newest one, Elvis, which if you want to move up to the next, which we are in the middle of doing a uh, catalog page on, it's called the DS Mix, M-I-X. Okay. That one is going to be a little bit more than the than the Pro, but the resolution on the camera on that one is even better, and it's a little bit quicker. It's being well-received, and I will tell you, and this is the truth, I happen to be sitting in a room that happens to be near some of them. We have sold some of these without even advertising it or promoting it, <laughs> and so we know there's a good market for it, but uh, Shining 3D has moved up quite a bit. We formed a, a very good working relationship with them. You may look at it later and say, you know, I, I never even considered that. And gosh, that, that is really a, a really nice price. And we, we need to take a look at that. 
So yeah, that's that got our foot in the door with many dental labs, and of course that helped us expand our zirconia business. The Delta zirconia took off probably over the last several years, promoting that along with the scanners. People want to see a scanner at these trade shows. They walk right up to you and they, they want to see that, and that's something uh, I'm going to miss by not having the live lab day uh, show currently. You know, where you yeah yeah. What's it been like? You are you missing all of those shows as well? You guys are pretty much hunkered down too, aren't you? Pretty much, yeah. We're a lot like what's happening in Florida. Very similar. We have a lot of people here that are resistant to a lot of it and want to really get things as close to back to normal as we could. Yeah. But Oregon is doing the best it can uh, during this time that we're going through in this pandemic time. And, you know, we've been navigating through it. Just for the record, Oregon was never closed when uh, COVID started. Oregon has remained open to be literally an essential healthcare provider to dental labs throughout the United States. Yeah. And we've been fortunate. The first couple months were not the best months during COVID, mm -hmm. but, uh, I would tell you that in June and July, the demand was rocking and rolling. And I think you both know that. Yeah. You know, definitely. Uh, yeah, listening to your recent podcast, I kind of caught that in your last cast. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy for us. I mean, we've been super busy. We're super busy again in August, believe it or not. That's great. Has it changed the way that you guys are selling? Do you still have people that are going out on the road or are you all internal now? Yeah, we're, we're pretty much, we've, we've been internal for years. Okay. We do have some people that work, let's say, at, you know, outside the company that perhaps are in different parts of the country. We, you know, for different reasons, they were either uh, salespeople before or relationships I've met over the last 30 plus years in this industry that wanted to work for me. And so we are mostly based out of Southern California internally for our sales department. Mm. Nice. Yeah. You know, we welcome the opportunity at any time for anybody to uh, take a look at any of our materials or products. We all also are a refiner. Uh, I don't know if you see that Elvis on our website. Yeah. Oregon has been doing refining for years. My father's uh, connection in this business is uh, a gentleman that is a refiner, and he's one of the contacts that has been with us from the beginning and got very involved in Oradent and actually became one of the owners. So we do our own refining, and I'm proud to tell you that that's something we've been doing also for about 45 years hmm. is uh, scrap, scrap refining. We, you see that we promote that on our website. And offering very re reasonable returns for customers, we usually have a two-week to three-week turnaround time for uh, scrap refining, and it's something that we continue to promote both to laboratories and, and to dentists as well. Wow. Can you explain exactly how refining works? How can I send you a bucket full of scrap and crud and carpet pieces and porcelain pieces and you guys extract metal from it sure how does that act you know in layman's term keep it easy here now but uh -huh. uh, how does that work absolutely well first of all you're talking to a marketing guy i'm a business guy so i'm not okay good <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a scientist i'm not a dental technician i'm not, not going to try to bs you on any of that and fabricate any information we're going to start the process with the service we offer. We're going to pick that scrap up from your dental lab. You don't have to do anything but stand by and wait for a FedEx label to come. Okay. Yeah. We're going to pack it up however you'd like. We're going to come get it. We're going to give you a FedEx label, and it's going to be shipped to Oregon. Okay? From there, we take it. We log everything in. We weigh everything out. We take a photograph of it, just like most other refining companies would do that. Mm -hmm. And I can't give you too much information because some of it is proprietary. Okay. We'll give you just a general idea of what happens. That material is taken in a secured area, and it is all melts. It, depending on what material it is and what shape it's in, it will be melted down. Let's just say you turn in, I'm going to throw out a number of 20 ounces, okay? Yeah. yeah. Let's say you turn in 20 ounces and you give us a bunch of grindings and you give us crowns and all kinds of other goodies that you throw in there. And let's just say the majority of it, is metallic, all right? Okay, yeah. It's all going to get melted down into a bar, mm -hmm. all right? And sometimes in the process, copper may be added to that. Uh, there's other things that are done to it without going into detail. I'm assuming, Elvis, you've done refining before? Yeah, we have. We just ship it out, you know, and then... Right, yeah. so everybody's different. Each company has a different process. Yeah. And that bar, after it's melted down, samples will be taken from that bar. We like to do three samples, sometimes more. And the reason for that is because when the bar is melted, it's not always homogeneous. Mm -hmm. The material in the bar, let's say in one part of the bar, it could be 21% gold or 30. Um, let me, let's move it up higher. Let's say the bar is 30% gold. And let's say another part of the bar is 27% gold. And another part of the bar is perhaps maybe 28% gold. So we would possibly take an average of those three. 
Mm-hmm. Come up with whatever that is. Let's say it's 28, 27.9. And then we factor in a couple of other things we do too, without getting into too much detail. We multiply that percentage by the weight of the material, and we'd come up with a number of whatever it might be. X amount of ounces is in that specific lot of gold, in a, and it happens to be gold. Mm-hmm. We do it similar with palladium, similar for platinum, and similar for silver. Now, our company has a different structure on how we pay out. You know, once your scrap lot is settled, it's settled uh, usually in a 10 to 15 day business period after we receive it. And the settlement is the actual market you get paid on when it's settled. You know, in your case or anybody's case, we would pay 90% of the London gold market on the day it's settled. We would pay the customer 80% of the palladium and platinum market on the day it's settled of the findings in there. And we would pay the customer 75% of the silver market of the amount of silver that's found in that scrap lot. We don't pay on anything else like copper and any other elements that really are not either precious or have different value. It would be just gold, platinum, palladium, and silver. Like sure. no platinum, That's how we pay out on. And we pay the customer accordingly. Some people want cap, you know, they want a check. Some people want alloy. Some people want zirconia. Some people want a credit on their account. We're very flexible about the whole thing. Yeah. And so it, it's an accommodation item, more to say, for the customer, the, the scrap refining. It really is. I will tell you that it's been something that is sent to us almost by itself without soliciting anybody. Because if they're buying their zirconia, and they're buying alloy from us, they're also going to most likely send the scrap refining to the same company, but not always. Sometimes we have customers only send us scrap refining and they're buying their alloy from another, you know, from one of our competitors. Yeah. So it just depends because they want to see how it compares. So I always tell people, if you want to give us a shot at it, just send us a small lot. Five, 10 ounces and see what you think. See how you like the return. See what you think. If you like that, go with a bigger lot next time and turn in more. I always recommend, and to really be fairest to the dental laboratory, send in smaller lots to whoever you send your scrap refining to because you want to kind of price average that along as you go since these markets are so high with gold and palladium right now. And that way you, you don't get, let's say, underpaid on something because you're, you're turning it in every maybe three months or four months. You kind of take care of the price averaging by getting... Uh, whatever that is at that time, over a period of a year, you've done okay. You know, if you refine multiple times a year, that's probably the way to go. If you can do that, some people just turn it in once a year or every couple of years. Others every three months, every two months, depending on your volume. You do have customers that do it every couple months. They're still using that much metal. We, we do have we do have people like that. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I will tell you both, and you can probably ask any of our friendly competitors. Although alloys have definitely shrunk, there is no doubt about it still being used uh, in the country. But we've, like I said earlier in this podcast, we transitioned pretty much by selling a lot of zirconia to cover that. Mm-hmm. And there are some cases that since you're both involved on the technician side, uh, you would probably almost be able to say with confidence that there's some cases in a patient's mouth, you can't really use zirconia or another material. You might have to use metal for a specific reason. I, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but yeah, I do. Oh, I do too. Yeah. 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 And I will tell you that it's looking like it's going to be around for a while unless the price becomes so prohibitive to the point where it's just not even affordable to anybody. Sure. No, so yeah, gold, you know, my mom has always said gold's eternal. Yep. So yeah, casting gold is still out there. I'll be honest with you. After COVID, everybody shut down. We were open as you guys were. But when we brought everybody back from furlough and the work started rolling back in, PFMs increased like 10 to 15%. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. (laughs) We got busy in every area, which surprised me in implants and the um, smile design. But it really surprised me that PFMs took off. So for whatever reason... It's definitely still out there and the demand is still pretty high. And I think a lot of it's these, correct me if I'm wrong, the older doctors, you know, they just don't want to switch to BFMs and that's what they like and that's what they order. Right. And gold too. Yeah, absolutely. Some places have younger doctors ordering both. They're doing both. They're using everything. They'll be using uh, everything from Emacs to full cast, to PFM, to, you know, I know that they'll use Katana, you know, a high end company. I see it all. Yep. That's a great product. And that's the beauty of what we do is that we have so many options and it sounds like your company is right in there. So like I said, we fill that niche, you know, obviously when we got to go get somebody like Ivaclar, you know, which is a great company, we fill that void of on service by uh, giving that laboratory something that maybe uh, Ivaclar can't quite do because it's too late in the day or they can't drop everything to give the technical support that perhaps is needed on a scanner 
you know, a guy calls and as we sell these scanners, people have questions. They need support. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we have a technician inside here that's more than happy to take the call and walk you through it. And, and if we can't accomplish the needs that way, then we take it to the next level and we get uh, the manufacturer more involved with us and we, we do it all. You know, we have a team viewer, we can do it online, we can talk to you on the phone, whatever it takes until we uh, satisfy the customer's needs and make sure that you're happy. Awesome. I love that. We love us some customer service, man. I mean, I can buy a machine from anybody, but that's what I look for when I buy equipment is who's going to service me because I know I'm going to need it. Sure. So what made you guys get into being a milling center? I see that you provide all that service too. Right. Well, that happened also several years ago because same thing for refining. It's an accommodation item. It's not something that we heavily promote. You know, you have many labs that were, you know, using analog technology that switched over to the digital side. They didn't want to get a scanner. They, for whatever reason, you know, the guy is X amount years old and he says, hey, or she says, hey, I'd like to just send these things out and have somebody else make the copings for us and we'll finish them off. So we got involved doing that. We kind of grew that as well. It's an accommodation item service that we give all over the country. I don't think that we're per se a milling center on its own, but we're a milling center that accommodates anything that you need in addition to Origen products. Yeah, we did get into that and we and we do, it is something that is happening almost, yeah, I would say daily it happens and we, we get cases coming in and out. I'm not trying to change our event by any means into a dental laboratory. We would never want to compete against any of our customers. We want to still be a manufacturer and a supplier and a distributor of the materials and products that we currently sell labs. You know, we want to keep the relationship strong that we have. You know, that being said, it is strictly an accommodation item. A dentist won't be able to buy your intraoral scanner and send directly to you for milling. To the best of my knowledge, it's not set up that way now. If that changes down the road, I will call you first and let okay. you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, it's like anything else. You have to reinvent yourself uh, during these kind of times. You guys know that. Uh huh. So I decided dentist with the intraoral scanner would be a market for us to hit, and it would not be competing against anything to do with our laboratories. And if anything, it would be helping our laboratories. Oh, yeah. So we have a couple of our customers helping us by making presentations right now as I have this conversation with you. We have a gentleman in Ohio that's presenting the uh, intraoral scanner to a group of 20 different locations that this dental group has. You know, he claims that uh, they're interested in starting with two and moving on from there. Nice. So, And the reason he's helping us is because these cases, these files would be sent directly to his laboratory. This happens to be a denture laboratory that we're talking about. That's another market for us because we never sold anything really geared for denture laboratories. So we now we, with the intraoral scanner, we're able to help him out. Can it scan a dentalist patients? He's asking a question even over his pay grade, Leonard. Oh, come on. I, you know, I don't want to answer anything without knowing the proper answer. That's <laughs> so, fine. Like I said, because I know that we're going to be listened to by many. Yeah. And so far, I will tell you that I have put this iOS in the hands of a very, very prominent prosthodontist. Oh, God, really? <laughs> I mean, very, very prominent. Somebody that is very influential in the industry that is not only using it, but field testing it. I've met with him personally, and we're going to be getting more and more feedback. But as time goes on, if I am able to accomplish the objectives that we're going to do with my sales team and our marketing efforts... He would be heavily involved in demonstrating the iOS in his operatory, which happens to be inside of a dental laboratory. Nice. Mm. This is an unusual situation. A dental laboratory with a built-in operatory that has a doctor that practices there several times a week. Interesting. I wonder who it is. <laughs> I can share some of that information, but I will tell you that it's still a little bit proprietary, a little bit, because we yeah. want to make sure we have it all happy and working and great. But I will also tell you he's an educator at UCLA. And the fact that he was educated, I think, at Columbia University in New York would make him a top candidate to uh, be a key opinion leader for the intraoral scanner that we're, we're talking about. And I think when you see this being promoted more and more, you'll remember this part of the podcast, because I think this is going to be a, a large game changer as we go forward in time for Orida. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. 
Yeah, that's really what's new with us. I think I gave you as much as I could give you that's new. <laughs> nice. nice. No, no, I was just going to ask you, what's your favorite part of your day? Like, what do you really enjoy most about what you do? Is it the people? You know, I, well, I will tell you this, and this is really the truth. That it's no BS. It's the people here that I've hired and that work for me that give me not only the strength, but have inspired me to want to keep moving forward. So to answer your question, I wear multiple hats in this company. My background is everything from managing credit to hiring salespeople to having marketing plans and business plans for what we do. I oversee our manufacturing facility. I oversee our accounting department and shipping. So I kind of am involved in a lot of it. And I have to say that I enjoy the advertising. I enjoy the marketing stuff. I actually also enjoy getting out of this office and visiting dental laboratories and seeing customers and prospects. I enjoy that a lot. I guess as I think about it, Barbara. All of it? <laughs> I, 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 enjoy it. I do enjoy all of it, but I, I like interfacing with customers. I, I have to tell you, this past uh, week or two, I've gone out with Jimmy Ruiz, our sales manager, and we went into a local laboratory that we have been working on and off for years that we have dealt with. And we were uh, very successful in uh, having him buy uh, large quantities of our Delta Zirconia. And we made this visit to his lab and discovered that he was dealing with a very, very large dental group here in Southern California that we had no idea of. So it was kind of gratifying to see that. Yeah. Hmm. It's just nice to see our products out there. I just like to see customers and I, yeah, I do enjoy it all. Great. I like it all. I get a charge out of a lot of stuff here. And uh, it's uh, right now the uh, social media end of it. I'm, I'm enjoying watching that grow. Yeah. That's been fun to see that. And I'm, I'm realizing I did miss out on some things because I'm a private guy and, you know, it was more than time to move forward and I'm glad we are. So one uh, hereditary question. Do you have any uh, children that you think are going to work with you eventually? Well, you're talking to a man who is a possible confirmed bachelor. Oh, Jesus, really? All right. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't like women or have a girlfriend. It's just, uh, you know, in all due respect, I will tell you I have made a very strong commitment to being involved in this company and working here. And I don't want to say that I've been married to Oradent, but it, it has been a big part of my life with my time. And if I would have gotten married, Barbara, or I would have had kids, it would have taken a very, very patient woman. <laughs> Well, that's a great answer. Thank you. Since my shelf life and relationships is, is probably five to seven years, <laughs> I, I, you know, you know, without getting TMI here, too much information, <laughs> I will tell you that I was never against marriage. It just, at least up to this podcast, <laughs> it's not on the cards in case she is listening. Yeah, there you go. Contact information at VoicesFromTheBench.com. Yeah, thank you for answering that honestly. I don't mean to pry at all. I was just curious. I have no ears. I have one sister who is not involved. She lives out of state. She lives up in Washington state. And I've been the sole family member aside from my mom and dad involved at Oradent. Awesome. Well, it really shows. I mean, Oradent yeah. shows that you've spent a lot of time and a lot of energy. What you do, it's it's a competitive market and you've been doing it for so long and your legit longevity, it, it shows. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't mention in the beginning of this, maybe I did. This is a sign of my aging here. The name Oradent itself was created by my father. And because the chemical symbol for gold is AU, he was trying to come up with something with dental gold. So he came up with Aura Dent, hence dental gold. I love it. That's awesome. And I'm pretty sure we're the only ones that had it. As we searched on the internet, we did find other Aura Dents out there, but not doing what we do. Sure. We're different stuff. So, And the only thing I really didn't mention during this podcast was my original involvement was working much younger when I was like, let's say, 13 to 16 years old. My parents had me involved doing their uh, inspections and quality control of dental alloys, which uh, was not my favorite thing as a kid to do, but you know, paid me, uh, you know, uh, I would say, child labor prices, if you want to call it. Of course, it. yes. Uh, because that's kind of what you do with your kids when you have a family business. And so that kind of got my foot in the door and in getting involved with them. And then uh, later on, of course, much later in years, is when I really uh, took this whole thing seriously. You know, here I am today. I've, you know, I, I was living in Los Angeles for years, and I moved to Orange County near Oradent to be much closer to the company, so I could obviously not have a commute and be able to be nearby for everything going on, and that, that's been beneficial. Took myself off the freeways of Southern California, which has been nice. I've heard bad things about it. <laughs> During COVID, we had a, a an easy time, and then in the last, I would say, month or so, 
month and a half, a lot of people went back to work and it got busier, you know, so there are many people out there now working and hopefully we'll see things get even better and stronger, hopefully, as uh, our economy uh, comes back. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it will. It definitely will. So, I mean, I'm really hoping. Are you guys, you guys seeing an improvement, you know, with what you're seeing in your markets where you are? Oh, yeah. Yeah, big time. Yeah, that's good. I mean, we came back real strong. We've plateaued, but it's still happy at where we're at. That's good. That's yeah. good. And, and hopefully maybe one day Oregon can be part of that too, of your growth as well. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Leonard, we appreciate it. That was great. I've always known of your company. Mm-hmm. We sat next to you in Chicago and it was mm-hmm. great to hear the story and all the things that you guys are doing. It's good stuff. Oh yeah. You know, Elvis, we have a lot of name brand recognition and, and that's thanks to the, you know, the advertising over the years we've done and the marketing and the trade shows. But we still need to give it a little bit more of a push, just a little bit more. So adding on to our sales team, which we've recently done, is going to be the key to that. And I do believe people, it's my team and people that are, are what give us success. And so I'm counting on these people to move us forward. And I do believe that we are going in the positive direction as a company. That's great. Awesome. No pressure to them, though. <laughs> no, no pressure at all, absolutely. No. And I appreciate the time you both gave me today and uh, giving Oregon this opportunity and giving me the opportunity to talk to you. Absolutely. We appreciate it, Leonard. Great. All right. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a great day. You too, both of you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, Elvis, how's that new Form 3B printer from Form Labs doing at your lab? I think you told me last week that you uh, got one in. It's amazing how easy it is to print. You know, from the self-dispensing resin, which is kind of amazing, to the easy-to-use wash station directly into the curing unit, it's a breeze to bring into our production. All right, so give it up. What are you printing? Well, this first week, we've just been doing models. But with this larger build plate... We have been getting almost a whole day's worth of models in one print. Wow. Then we've been printing a few of the same models on our old printer to compare the two. That's actually really smart. So what have you seen? It's definitely a nice model. The detail and the lack of those, you know, the print lines on the models. Mm-hmm. Yep. So far, our technicians are preferring the Form Lab models over the other ones. Wow. That sounds like you made a good choice going for the Form 3B. Maybe I'll look into getting one. We've got a lot of digital cases coming in that we need to print. Or maybe a few, actually. Well, you won't be disappointed. You should check out their talk show style event on September 15th. Head over to bit.ly slash forms dash voices. Whew, that was big. Or see the link on this episode's show notes to register for the event. And, of course, head over to formlabs.com to learn more about the Form 3B printer. We appreciate your support of the podcast, Form Labs. Thank you. A big thanks to Leonard for coming on our podcast. We super love hearing stories about companies that have been around for a long time and adapted to the change in materials and workflow in our industry over the years. If you are interested in learning more about Oradent, be sure to see the links on this show's episode notes. So remember, everybody, when you're listening to us, leave a review. We would appreciate it. It's that review that will get us into the ears of other people in the world to learn more about our industry. Awesome. All right, everybody. That's all we got. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. I'm ready, willing, and able. That's what she said. (laughs) 